you don't know how tides work, you're in the right place. Because in this video, I'm going to explain exactly how they work. It all starts with the moon. The first step to understanding tides is understanding gravity. You are standing on the earth, and the earth has gravity. But the moon also has gravity. And if you were standing on the moon, you could jump a lot higher than if you were standing on earth. This happens because gravity depends on mass. The bigger something is, the more gravity it has. Earth is pretty big, so its gravity is strong, but the moon is a lot smaller, so its gravity is weaker. But gravity is more complex than that, and gravity also depends on distance. Specifically, it weakens with the square of distance, so the farther you are from something, the weaker its gravity will feel. So here on Earth, where the center of Earth is about 4,000 miles away, gravity is quite noticeable. What's less noticeable is the moon's gravity. The moon is pretty far away, which means we hardly feel its gravitational pull at all. But that gravitational pull is there, and it's going to be important later. So the Earth is kind of big, over 8,000 miles across. And remember, gravity weakens with distance. So if we look at the Earth and moon like this, we see that the moon's gravity on Earth will be different at different points on Earth. To simplify, let's replace the Earth with three simple dots, like so. This dot here in the middle represents the center of Earth, and is about 240,000 miles away. But this dot is closer to the moon, by about 4,000 miles. So it feels a slightly stronger force of gravity than the center dot does. And this dot feels a weaker force of gravity, since it's about 4,000 miles farther than the center dot. Now, let's add a few more dots. The dot up here is about the same distance away from the moon as the center dot. So it feels about the same strength of pull, just angled slightly toward the moon. And this dot below is pulled the same, just upwards. Now if we plug the Earth back in, we can see that different points along Earth's surface experience slightly different forces of gravity from the Moon than the center of Earth does. And we can find that difference by taking the force of gravity along the surface points and subtracting the force from the center. This gives us what's known as the tidal force, and it's these tidal forces that cause the tide to shift. Now looking at this graph, we can see that two bulges are forming in line with the moon, and you might begin to think you know why. You think the moon is pulling water away from Earth. But that's wrong. These arrows show the moon's tidal forces on Earth, and are grossly oversized. Remember, the entire force of gravity from the moon on Earth is extremely weak. But if the moon doesn't pull water away, what's really going on here? Well, let's take another look at that graph. Only these two points have arrows pulling directly away from Earth. Most of these other arrows are pointing along the surface, and they act like tiny pushes that accumulate over the vast ocean, gently pushing water toward these bulges. If that sounds weird, think of it like this. A bunch of water is spilled on a tabletop. Lifting that water and moving it would be challenging, but sliding it along the table is quite easy. That's basically what's happening here, too. So even though the forces are very small, they add up over so much ocean that they work together to move the water along the earth. This results in two water bulges, here and here. So now that we know how the moon shifts water into bulges, the next question is, why does the tide come in and go out? Simple, the earth is spinning. One full rotation takes a day, so as your coastline rotates into one of those bulges, the water level is slightly higher, and you get a high tide. As the day goes on, the earth keeps spinning, and you move out of the bulge, which makes the water level go down, and you get low tide. You rotate through the second bulge, getting another high tide, and when you rotate out of it, another low tide. So while the tide looks like it's coming in or going out, it's not. You are spinning into and out of a pre-existing bulge in Earth's oceans, which gives the illusion that the tide rises and falls as you spin through this bulge. So the next time you're at the beach and the waves slowly crawl up, forcing you to move all your stuff, don't blame the ocean. Blame the moon.